Hello everybody, I hope you're going well. Today we are going to talk about the King's Gambit, when and how to use it. So, before showing you some moves, I have to explain you what is the, the King's Gambit. So, it is a very aggressive opening, which starts with e4, e5, pawn, f4. Uh, and, you know, and the reason why some people might consider using the King's Gambit is because it is a surprising factor, you know, you can just sacrifice a pawn like that and weaken up your king and still being winning. It is a very, very aggressive play. I will show you some very, very interesting lines. You're developing very fast, but again, I will show you that during the game and you have a lot of attacking opportunities thanks to the fact, thanks to the fact that you are developing all your pieces very fast. However, you have to be aware of the risk that you might have a very strong material disadvantage, a pawn or a knight or actually a full rook. Uh, black might have some console play, which we will also look at. Uh, and against some players which are especially a lot, lot stronger than you, it's not going to work so good because you have to understand this opening good enough to actually be able to use it even against you know, same level type of players. So in summary, the, the King's Gambit is a very nice opening with a lot of aggressive play and you might, actually I would recommend you to use it when you're comfortable with open positions. Uh, it's fun, exciting, uh, it requires a lot of understanding and you know, the resulting position that we might have are full of tactics and strategy so it's important to know this line correctly. But okay, it starts only with e4, e5 and pawn to f4. And the reason why this is such a complicated opening is because there are billions of lines. So the main line is, of course, e takes f4. Uh, d5 exists, knight f6 exists. Uh, but in both case, I would just recommend you to actually take on d5. If they go e4, you can just go d3. Do not be, do not be sad about that. It is just something normal. I'm just creating you a small repertoire. You can just keep, you know, put all these lines into your, your files. But what I would recommend you is this. Let's say e4, knight, okay, d3. If queen takes, then knight c3. You can just win the pawn over here. Uh, so let's say knight c3, knight f6. You can just go d3 again this then d takes e4 and white is a little bit better because we are having a very nice end game i'm just showing you some lines in which they do not take the pawn before taking the pawn because taking the pawn isn't such such a problem bishop c5 is a trap if you take then you're just losing immediately uh, because checkmate and if g3 they take on e4 and then they take on each one and you're lost um so bishop c5 you have to go knight f3 in order to prevent queen h4 check d6 you can just go bishop c4, developing normally, d3, queen e2, bishop e3. It is a normal line. But this is al already what can happen if they do not take the pawn on f4. Now we will discuss about taking on f4 because this line requires a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. Okay, let's say... Hmm. Let's say that black takes a pawn. What is the worst thing that can happen? Good question, but nobody knows. Boom. Hmm. <laughs> now what? The pawn is on f4. We just lost the pawn. And the king is wide open. Yes, but no. Boom. Knight f3. Hmm. <laughs> the idea of knight f3 is actually pretty simple. The pawn on f4 is very weak. Because it is a double pawn. There is no other pawns guarding this, this pawn over here. And the plan that we have is actually bishop c4. And rook f1. I mean, castling in order to have the rook on f1. For example... Let me show you that, this, and now we see that we are just having a very strong position, the pawn is weak, everything is weak, and this is actually the dreaming setup that we want to achieve. But we have a small problem, and when I say we have a small problem, I mean Houston, we have a very tough problem to solve here. There is the pawn move g5. Of course we cannot take because the queen is there, so we have to actually do something about that. And this is the most aggressive line in the king's gambit, uh, in my opinion of course, but who am I? Uh, bishop c4, g4 and castling. And we are just sacrificing a full piece, but in return what do we have? One, two, three pieces playing, the center, the pawn on f4 is going to be lost. And this is for example a line which can happen quite often, knight c3, we want knight d5, so c6 in order to, pre to prevent this, d4, uh, or d3 if you prefer, you know, d6, bishop f4, and this is a very complicated line. Uh, so we have to fight 
on the f7 square with the white pieces and black wants to protect this. So that's the reason of bishop e6. Now we take, let's say, queen takes and d4. And now the king is still in the center, so we want to open up the center. In order to open up the center, you have to move away the pawns, which are actually preventing you from putting a rook on the same file as the king with check. So it means that the pawn on e4 now has to be removed. So that's the main reason why we want to go d5 and or e5, because if they take, you take with the bishop, and d5, if they take, you take with the pawn, in order to play rook there with check. So let's go back. You see that it is a line which exists, which is actually very difficult. Um, but let's say that instead of go 9 f3, you prefer to go bishop c4, which is a line pretty, that is pretty interesting because if you go g5 right now, then queen h5, and this is a very difficult position, or knight f3, and you can play this position again. It is a so called transposition. But after bishop c4, there is another move which causes a lot of problems. It is queen h4 check. It isn't such a bad move, but you have to know that it exists. The only move is, of course, king f1. And the idea is that we want castle. Uh, we are only up, we are only down a pawn, but what we will do is actually pretty interesting. We will actually take the center like that, develop the knight like that, and then just develop all the pieces, you know, and you see that now we have a very strong center, but in return, we cannot castle and never be able to castle is eventually a problem, but if you are fast enough with the center, with, for example, knight g5 attacking the pawn, queen h5 attacking the king and the pawn, uh, then normally you should be able to survive. Now, it is a line that exists. Uh, I can show you something else which is also important to keep in mind, is that if black goes f6, they are just lost immediately. You can just take, take, check. If king is 7 you take there, it is a so-called Damiano defense, but you are just up uh, everything twice. H4, you would just open up lines, you, you're just up a knight. Compared to the regular Damiano defense, which starts with E4, E5, knight F3, F6. Then you have this sacrifice line in which you're just crushing and yeah, it happens. <laughs> it happens, I guess. Uh, but okay, and if they go king e7, you can just do the same. This, d5, check, this, uh, h4, h5, uh, d4, uh, bishop d6, and I don't remember queen, no, not queen five. I do not remember that. Let me think for a second. Yeah, I think it is uh, bishop takes b7, you take and check, check, and the same stuff, h4. And the king is, is super duper weak and the position is just lost. Um, in every case, the position is lost. So it doesn't really matter how and when we will actually checkmate. We will checkmate in every case. It is exactly the same, but without actually losing uh, so much stuff. And if g6, we can just grab everything, of course. Bishop c4 is also mate. But we can, of, of course, just take the rook. But I would recommend you bishop c4 in order to checkmate like that. Because checkmating is usually, usually very, very good. Now, I saw, I showed you the lines that I'm showing you very fast are lines which are especially bad because they are just losing. So, you know, it is just basic, basic tactics. And in order to be good at basic tactic, basic tactics, you have to, of course, repeat uh, classical patterns, you know, either with a book or online on the internet in some training puzzles, you know, websites. But in order to go back into this position, I would recommend you knight f3 and to go after g5, bishop c4, g4, either castle or knight e5. Knight e5 also exists, but now the line starts to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, it is also a line that exists, of course. Uh, for example, d4, d6, you know, knight d3. It is very complicated. It isn't such a clear position because black does have some console play, but the game probably isn't that lost yet. Uh, g3 somehow forced, queen h3, king e1. It is very, very complicated and I will never, you know, I, I cannot recommend you to play this line if you're not familiar and if you do not understand that you have some counter play. Now the queen is trapped, for example, because he cannot take the rook and bishop f1 is coming. See, it is coming out of nowhere. Um, so the key to actually be good at, at, at this opening is just to 
play a lot of games, lose a lot of games, and then continue with all uh, all this. You know, you just analyze the games that you just played in this opening. Of course, you know, it is possible that after that they will go knight f6, which is also a bad move because you can just, you know, develop normally. If you take there knight e4, it's not so clear because of queen h4 check. But okay, knight f3, d5, d4, and or oh, probably d3. The knight goes away, d4, d4, and bishop d3, for example, and you have a very strong center. And the position is pretty equalized, but at the same time we have a small edge because we will actually castle and we have nice open lines for all our pieces. Um, it just it just depends on what you like in chess and what you particularly hate in chess. Hopefully you enjoyed this small uh, video. If you have more questions, feel free to ask them. See you in the future. Take care.